Welcome back students. In this video, we're going to talk about Newman projections. When we discuss our alkanes, our alkanes are all made up of single bonds. And if I show you this structure right here, where I have purposefully just made this side a different color than this side in order to be able to distinguish between the two sides, all of the bonds within your alkane, because they're sigma bonds, have the ability to rotate. So these bonds are rotating at room temperature all the time. And what we want to be able to do is draw the different positions that these atoms can be sitting in with respect to one another at any moment. And the best way to do that is with Newman projections. Let's first start off to the side on the left over here and show you a plain old picture of an alkane where we're including hydrogens that are wedged and dashed to help indicate the hydrogens that are going behind the plane of the page and the hydrogens that are coming out at you. Remember that dashed hydrogens are going behind the plane and the wedged ones are coming out at you. And then if we take that structure and we start to twist it. So we're just changing our perspective. We get this middle structure that I've drawn, which is called the sawhorse representation, right? You're just taking that front carbon, so this carbon right here, and you're twisting it towards your face. Once in that sawhorse projection, you take that front carbon and you keep twisting it until the front carbon is right in line with your eye. When that happens, the back carbon gets to be impossible to see. Let's do that with our model. With our model, we have our normal just projection. And we're going to twist to sawhorse. And then we're going to twist so that now the front carbon is right at your eye. Notice how if the front carbon is right at your eye and you're perfectly lined up, you can't see the back carbon anymore. And that's why in our Newman projection, we have to draw the back carbon as just a big circle. So the big circle that I just highlighted in blue is the back carbon. And the location I'm highlighting in yellow is your front carbon. When we look at our Newman projection again, where your front carbon is just where those three bonds to hydrogen meet, the back carbon that I'm holding on to is the big circle. Notice how you have one, two, three atoms attached to that big circle. And then you have the front carbon where there's one, two, three atoms directly attached there. If we look at our three atoms attached to the big circle, I'm going to box them. So here's our three atoms that are attached to the big circle. Notice how the bond to those hydrogens stops at the big circle because that big circle is your back carbon. Now that we have some of the notation down for Newman projections, let's look at how to draw a Newman projection. This is kind of a normal type of question where you have a molecule and someone asks you to draw a Newman projection and often they'll give you some additional criteria. For example, in the Klein textbook, they often say looking at it from this direction, right? Looking at it with this arrow. So there's an arrow here and that arrow is saying make sure your eyeball is right here. That's where my eyelashes. I'm not a great drawer. Uh, and your eye is looking this direction. It depends upon how picky your teacher is, what you're going to need to do. And those of you who are my student, I'm pretty picky. In this case, I would want you to draw this just the way that it is. Meaning, that see how that bromine is pointing down? I would want you to start by drawing this shape because that is showing a downward pointing bond and your bromine is going to be on the downward pointing bond because in your structure that bromine is pointing down. Now in our skeletal notations hydrogens are not drawn in but you know that there's two hydrogens one here and one here 
So I'm going to put those hydrogens in. Now let's add our back circle. So our back circle is this carbon that I just drew a C there. That carbon has three hydrogens attached to it, so we can draw the three hydrogens that are attached to the back circle. And that's well how we would end up drawing a Newman projection for this. For the next one, I changed the structure a little bit and changed the location of where you want to have your eyeball looking. And the key is here that where your eyeball is looking, it's almost like you need to take your face and put it so that your eyeball is right there. So you look at it and you look at it from this way and imagine if I'm looking at it from this direction, what's that bromine doing? Right? The bromine is coming out of the plane of the page, and if you're looking at it the right way, then that means the bromine is going to be on the right-hand side. So see if you can draw a Newman projection for this one, and then we'll come back and compare when you're ready. So for this one, I'm going to do the same thing where I'm going to draw my beginnings of my Newman projection with a downward pointing bond because this bond that I'm highlighting blue is pointing downward. I have that downward pointing bond and at the end where I'm circling, that's a CH3. Now, if I'm imagining where my eyeball is, this bromine is pointing to the uh, out of the plane of the page. And if my eyeball is where it is, is supposed to be, then that means the bromine is going to be on the right hand side. It might be really beneficial for you to actually build this molecule with your molecular model set so you can take the molecule in the plane of the paper, build it that way, and then physically rotate it so that you're looking at it because actually building it and feeling it and having it in your hands and being able to rotate it is really going to help you see why that bromine is on the right hand side. Then you'll put your hydrogen over here because remember that the carbon that we're looking at, well, it has another bond and that bond is going to be to hydrogen because we're in skeletal notation. Then we draw our back carbon. So if this is our front carbon, we'll call that carbon one, and this is our carbon two, our back carbon. That's not nomenclature numbering, that's just me trying to keep track of my carbons. Then I have my back carbon here. My back carbon has a CH3 attached to it, which I just highlighted in yellow. And that CH3, see how it's pointing upward away from your eyeball, like up that means that my CH3 will be here, and then I fill in those other locations with my hydrogens. This looks great. Drawing Newman projections is really difficult, so you definitely want to give it loads of practice. Now what I would like to do is look in more detail at some of these Newman projections and put some terminology behind them. In very simple Newman projections, there's two kinds of conformations. There are what we call the staggered conformation. In the staggered conformation, the bonds to your front carbon are staggered with respect to the bonds in your back carbon. If we look at our model, that would look like this where your white bonds right, or the white atoms are on the front, the red atoms are on the back carbon, and the white and the red are staggered with respect to one another. They are, there's as much space between them as possible. For the eclipsed conformation, what happens in the eclipsed is your carbons rotate so that now your front atoms and your back atoms are lining up perfectly. I'm going to twist this so you can also see how they're lining up right here. 
you can imagine that that's probably pretty hard to draw. So our eclipse confirmation looks a little bit different where I'm gonna keep that front carbon looking the same. We'll draw that back carbon. For that eclipsed confirmation, in order for us to draw the hydrogens and still see them on the sheet of paper, we have to draw them not perfectly eclipsed, meaning that we have to draw them in such a way that the back hydrogens don't line up perfectly with the front hydrogens or else you couldn't draw them, you wouldn't see them. So they're just off a little bit here. And depending upon the textbook author that you're using, sometimes people will draw them a little bit tilted like I did, or sometimes people will not draw that bond tilted. They'll draw the bond straight like this and just try to get it as close to that front carbon as possible. It just is a notation thing where either one is appropriate. So the one on the left is called staggered, the one on the right is eclipsed. Which one do you think is more stable? Which one is going to be the situation that happens the most often? Hopefully you're kind of immediately saying the staggered because what's happening with the staggered positions is that those hydrogens, well, they've got as much space as they can have. I mean, they're spaced out as best that they can. So it really decreases the amount of uh, potential overlap from electron clouds. And so this one is going to be significantly more stable than the eclipsed conformation. So the eclipsed conformation where those hydrogens really line up, there's not enough space for them to spread out. And so this one is going to be less stable in comparison. Now let's transition to a Newman projection for a more complex molecule. Here I want to talk about butane. Butane is a great place to start with a slightly more complex molecule. First, let's draw out what butane looks like. Butane is just four carbons. When we start looking at the Newman projection for butane, we can draw one Newman projection to start with. And I'm just gonna draw the, the most stable one to start. This is my Newman projection for butane. Notice how I still have four carbons. I'm going to count them. Here's one. This middle place where all three of those bonds meet is carbon two. This circle is carbon three, and this one is carbon four. So there are my four carbons. When I say draw all the Newman uh, projections for butane, this is just one. There's more than this. Because remember that what's happening in real life, and I'm going to go ahead and show you my model again, is a rotation where we can rotate one, two, three, four, and we can keep rotating. But this model isn't butane. This model is simpler than butane. But because butane now has a different group on the first on the on the front carbon and a different group on the back carbon, we can start to see a difference between the conformations. When you draw Newman projections, I want you to either keep the first carbon, the front carbon, stationary, or the back one. So let's pretend we're going to keep the front carbon stationary. If we keep the front carbon stationary, that means that we're not changing how we're drawing the front carbon. And what's going to happen with that back carbon is it's going to rotate 60 degrees each time. And let's pick a direction. Let's go ahead and pick that the CH3 is going to rotate this way. That means that my next confirmation is going to be an eclipsed confirmation, where the CH3 and that front hydrogen are lining up with one another. When that CH3 rotates 60 degrees, it rotates so that all of the atoms are on the back carbon are rotating 60 degrees. So I'm going to draw in the different hydrogens that are now eclipsing with the atoms on the front carbon. So we drew one rotation. Now we're going to rotate again. We rotate again. We keep that front carbon looking the same. And that's just so that we don't confuse ourselves. And now the CH3 on the back carbon will be here. And our hydrogens will be here because if I take my CH3 and I rotate it here, 
all of the other atoms that that back carbon is connected to rotate as well. Now let's rotate again. I'm going to take that CH3, I'm going to rotate it another 60 degrees. When I do that, now those two CH3s are going to be really close to one another. They are going to be eclipsing. It's going to be hard to draw. I might actually draw an ME for methyl for the sake of space. And then put in my hydrogen here and my hydrogen here. Okay, let's draw another one. So let's take that CH3, that methyl. I'm going to rotate it so it goes here. Keep the front carbon the same. Ooh, see how I drew that one? I don't like, I want that longer. I want that to be really clearly connected. And then my CH3 is going to be over here. These hydrogens are still here. There we go. One more. We'll take that methyl and rotate it another 60 degrees. And when we do that, we're going to keep our front the same, just so that we don't accidentally draw the same structure twice. And then my CH3 will be here, and we'll have some eclipsing protons. One thing that I want to talk about before we go on to another page is notice how the direction of my CH3s changed. Over here, I was drawing CH3, CH3, CH3. Then in my bottom two examples, I did C and then to the left of that, my three hydrogens. And C to the left of that, my three hydrogens. Let's talk about why I did that. So here's my thought bubble over here. If we go back to one of those examples and I were to draw the CH3 the way I had been, which looks like this, that's wrong. What's wrong with this is the bond is saying that the back carbon is attached to hydrogen, and that is false. The back carbon is not attached to hydrogen. The back carbon is attached to carbon, and that's why I changed the order of this. The other wrong thing that students will often do when they're drawing Newman projections is I'm going to erase the back bond on that top hydrogen. They'll bring that bond all the way to the front carbon because they're lacking an understanding that the front carbon is where those three bonds connect and the back carbon is the circle. So the back carbon needs to have three bonds attached to it and the front carbon needs to have three bonds attached to it. Let's look one more time at all of the conformations of butane. In this image, it's showing you the relative energies of the conformations of butane. Remember, we just drew all the conformations of butane on the earlier page, right? Butane looks like this. We saw that there's six conformations for butane. The first one that we started with was the same one that we're seeing right here that I'm highlighting in yellow. And then we did a rotation. Now for this particular example, this figure from Chem Libre, they're rotating the front carbon, whereas we rotated the back carbon. You just rotate what makes sense to you, whatever makes you feel more comfortable, because either way, you're going to get it correct. Then, if we look at how we rotate in such a way that we get something that's eclipsed, then this is higher in energy than something that's staggered. But notice how even our staggered conformations these two, for example, this one and this one, those are not the same energy. And so in the staggered conformations, it's not just staggered anymore once you get to a bigger and more complex structure like butane. We're going to call this anti because the two groups are opposite one another. We're going to call this one gauche or gauche. 
however your professor chooses to pronounce it, it's fine. And this is still a staggered position, except the two CH3s are not opposite one another. They're 60 degrees away from one another. The next one here is still gauche. It's just a different version of gauche where the CH3s are still 60 degrees apart. They're just in a different location with respect to one another. If we go back to the eclipsed conformation, so we'll highlight the eclipsed in blue, so these ones are still eclipsed. These three eclipsed conformations, they're not all the same energy. The first one and the third one, these two, are the same energy. Because in each instance, you have a CH3 eclipsing with a hydrogen and another CH3 eclipsing with a hydrogen where when you say eclipsing it just means that they're on top of one another and not like I mean on top but they're lined up with each other that middle eclipsed confirmation is still just called eclipsed even though it's different than the other two the middle eclipse confirmation is higher in energy because you have these two biggest groups that are lined up with one another. And this creates a form of steric hindrance where the CH3s are just simply too close together and it increases the confirmation's energy. What I want you to be able to do is to draw all the Newman projections for a certain confirmation and then label them. Are they anti? Are they gauche? Are they eclipsed? Which one's the highest energy? Which one's the lowest energy? I have an example that I want you to try on the next page. This is exactly the type of question that I want you to be able to do. I want you to look at a structure, be able to draw its Newman projection, take that Newman projection and use it to draw the rest of the Newman projections, and then classify these as anti gauche or eclipsed. Finally, you should be able to also add which one is the most stable confirmation and which one's the least, but you can do that on your own. I didn't specifically ask that for that in this example. Why don't you give it a try and see how far you can get before we reconvene and compare answers. Let's do some comparing. So the first thing that I want you to do is look at the initial structure that you draw, drew and compare it to mine. And if you haven't yet drawn all the remaining Newman projections, just focus first on this one and then pause me again and try to get these other ones on your own. If you are ready to compare all of them, notice how there are six. That is going to be very typical when you have a confirmation that has two or more of these groups on the front and the back carbon. What I want you to do is take a moment and make sure that we've drawn all the same Newman projections. And it might take a couple of minutes for you to confirm that your Newman projections are the same as mine. And that's pretty normal. And welcome to how it feels when you have to grade papers. So whatever you did, just make sure that you're keeping either the front carbon or the back carbon steady and then rotating the other one. For me, I like to be consistent. I like to just pick the back carbon and rotate the main group on the back carbon. So the chlorine is the big group, the hydrogens, I mean, who cares about those? And I just like to pick a direction and just rotate 60 degrees each time. That makes me feel like I'm not going to miss anything. Once you're certain that you have drawn all the same Newman projections as me, let's go back and classify these as anti, gauche, or eclipsed. So the first one is going to be anti because the two groups that I've circled, the two big ones are opposite one another. So this is a form of a staggered confirmation and we call it anti. The next confirmation is showing eclipsed where the groups are lining up with each other. The third confirmation is another form of staggered which is called gauche. Notice how the two big groups are still staggered with respect to one another, but they're not opposite like they are in anti. And so this is what we call the gauche or gauche confirmation. And we continue this pattern hitting eclipsed next, and then gauche again, and then eclipsed one more time. 
If we wanted to add in which confirmation is our lowest energy or highest energy, or which confirmation is most and least stable, your anti-confirmation is always going to be your most stable. Remember that most stable means lowest energy. Your eclipsed confirmation, where the two groups are as close to each other as they can possibly get, that's going to be your least stable confirmation. So this one is least stable. And remember that least stable, that means highest energy. Wonderful. Let's wrap up. In this video, we went through Newman projections and learned how to draw Newman projections. You want to make sure that you can label Newman projections as staggered or eclipsed. Then remember, if your Newman projection is a little bit more complex, something like butane, you want to be able to further classify your uh, confirmation, your staggered confirmations as gauche or anti. And finally, you want to be able to rank the relative energies of those Newman projections, stating which is going to be the most stable and which is going to be the least stable. As always, thank you for your attention. This is Katoni signing out.